Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com here with a half case break of 2022 Panini Select Football. Pick your team number 11 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Second half in the store now here on a Monday, June 19th, 2023. Thanks everybody for getting in on the action. Appreciate it. If you have Chronic 25 next to your name, that means we did that Chronicles Football Hanger Pack number 25. We did that as a filler, gave away some teams. Last spot, Mojo went to Patrick who picked up the Steelers straight up before we uh, pull the remaining teams for that filler. All right, we're gonna grab a die and we're gonna roll it. One, two, three for the left six and four, five, six for the right six. And it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna be doing that side right there. This side we will save for picker team 12, which is in the store right now. It does not look like we have any more of this select, at least at the moment after break 12. We may have more along the way, but I can't assure you that it will be at the same price as it is now. Sometimes prices go up, sometimes they go down. But a lot of times they end up going up. So take advantage of the prices that are locked in now. All right, so for a select football, we're looking for two autographs and one mem memorabilia card per box on average. We're looking for uh, the tie-dye parallels. We're looking for XRCs, low-numbered cards, all sorts of stuff. The position player X, XRC cards, obviously, we know where they go. The mystery redemption autograph list, um, not announced. Well, actually, let's double check. I'm pretty sure they're not announced yet. Let's go to cardboardconnection.com, 2023, select football. Might as well double check just in case we run into this. Set checklist. XRC. Hmm. Oh. Come on, Joe. I'm looking at 2023 select draft picks football. I need to be looking at 2022 select football. Come on, man. Unbelievable. That's just. Yeah, the mystery autograph redemptions are not announced yet. So we'll randomize them to one person uh, in the group. I guess we'll, I mean, if we get more than one, we'll, we'll split them up. Name on top gets the first one, second name gets the second one that we pull, so on and so forth. Not too much uh, NFL news happening here. But I mean, we'll, we'll start seeing preseason action before we know it, I think uh, I think all the teams have every have all their rookies signed and everything. the The Chiefs have a 613 diamond Super Bowl ring. Dalvin Cook is a free agent after his release from the Vikings. Has an interest in teaming up with DeAndre Hopkins on his next team. Wow. Oh, that's a little package deal right there. And if Dalvin Cook can go to a team where, where they can kind of, you know, not rely too heavily upon him, kind of stretch out his career a little bit, I think they can do that. 
J.K. Dobbins, like a lot of other running backs, frustrated by his contract situation. Saquon hasn't signed yet. Josh Jacobs on my Raiders has not signed his franchise tag yet. Here's Jahan Dotson to 75. Rookie auto for Douglas on the Commanders. So there's been a lot of that going on. The running back market, not very good for running backs now. Which is unfortunate. I mean, it kind of happens. It's there's, you know, relative to other positions, just the studies have shown, you know, that they just don't last as, as as long in the league. There's DJ Moore to 149. Got trouble staying healthy after X amount of years in the league on average. You know, and a lot of teams in recent years who have paid big money to running backs have more often than not been been burned by it within a few years of that contract seemingly. There's Justin Herbert, a piece of his jersey, going to Kevin M and the Chargers. So we'll see what happens with these running backs. Quarterbacks, on the other hand, a different back. I mean, their salaries just seem to keep going up, up, up. There's Bradley Chubb to 99. This is Jerry Judy to 199. Saquon Barkley, I don't know if the deal's gonna get done there. Well, that was Kenny Pickett, can't forget about him. It's gonna go to Patrick and the Steelers. And field level, Kenny Pickett. The shortest, shorter print, printed cards of that, of all the multi tiers in select. Tricolor Jerry Judy to 199. Got Bobby Wagner to 75. We got Derek Stingley Jr. to 149. And Antonio Gibson, jersey and autograph for the Commanders. Douglas with the Commanders. Box one, done. Now, if you're looking at this uh, snazzy uh, Adidas quarter zip that I've got wearing here, some of you with sharp eyes may have seen the logo right here. That's the uh, LACC flag in the 123rd US Open. I was there yesterday watching the golf. At a, uh, at a country club that I'll, I'll likely never join, or never, man, man probably don't, don't want to join, but probably never will get accepted to join ever in my life. The golf course itself, beautiful. I don't know if it translated well on television, if any golf fans watched. Not sure if it translated well on television. The members there, Kind of D's, it's not surprisingly, I guess. You're talking about a super exclusive country club, but apparently they they had they had rigged it, not rigged it, but they had negotiated it where they didn't have to release too many tickets to the public. Each member got like four tickets or something like that, and then there was a campaign to buy all the public tickets, 
something crazy like that. So it would be like a private event almost or something. It was very odd. I suppose odd but not surprising. So if any of you heard any complaints about all oh, the, the vibes at this U.S. Open were, weren't as rowdy as like Brookline, for example, last year or other places, well, that's why. <laughs> and the rest of the people that were there were like in corporate hospitality tents. It was just, it was all just, it was all stuff like that. But the few, the people that were out there for the golf, I think I, they definitely were, were into it, though. I know I was. There's Trayvon Walker, and here's James Harrison. Nice. Two-color patch and autograph. That's going to go to Patrick Evans. Last spot mojo. Strikes again. This might fit into a slightly more comfortable and thicker top loader here. There you go. Four out of ten. That sort of X-Fractor pattern in the background looks really sharp against against the black and yellow. It's Trayvon Walker. Um, oh, they, they misstamped this. Look at that. It's out of uh, 99. Looks like 88 out of 99. Come on, Panini. There's Jaguars, or the printing factory, either, either one. There we go. That's better. 38 out of 49. Majai Sanders for Michael and Arizona. And that's green. That should be, yes, a train whistle number out of five. Three out of five, Michael Parsons. Who's got Dallas? Charles. Charles Byrne with the boys. And. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. Jahan Dotson. And we got a four out of five Raven, Kyle Hamilton. Three-color patch and autograph. Another train whistle. This time for Aaron Billingsley and his Ravens. The Purple Birds. Quote the Raven nevermore. Look at that. Aaron. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Same box. Pretty nice. And more Ravens. There's Lamar Jackson to 149. And again, I can't even pick it. I'm glad that, I'm glad that the Ravens got the, the deal done with Lamar Jackson. I feel like it would have been sort of weird to see him in a different uniform. Now, the, the pressure kind of floats back to Lamar Jackson, right? I mean, there were a little rumblings last year. Maybe he was... Not 100% committed to maybe playing whilst injured. I don't know how much of that's true, but you know, there's rumblings there. Maybe he wasn't, could have been out there, but wasn't. Tie dye, six out of 20. But now that he is, you would expect rain or shine, twisted ankle or not, you know. He'll be, he'll be battling through those injuries. I feel like he will be. It's Greg Dulcich to 99. And we know we can do it, too. Everyone thought that he would not be as good of a passer as he has become, I think. I'm sure he's still working on it, too. Give, give, maybe give the man some more weapons. Keep getting some of that, that classic... Uh, Classic Ravens defense going. Take some of that. It'd be good for the hobby too, I think. You know, see Lamar Jackson shine again. 
All right, next box. Golf course was great. LA Country Club was awesome. I don't think TV really did the, did it justice on how much elevation and hills and th there were fairways that were like a NASCAR turn at a at a at a NASCAR track. A lot of greens on a uh, on these like mounds on like a turtle, the back of a turtle, like a turtle back. It's just like this little ridge where you have to line it up. If you miss one way or the other, it's rolling right back down that hill. I know the low scores made it seem, you know, made it seem like it was too easy, but I mean, for every person that was shooting a 62 like the first day, and that was a little weather assist, but for every person I was shooting a 62, there were a lot of people that were having very bad days there. But now we live in a world where, where Wyndham Clark is our U.S. Open champion. Did anyone have that on their bingo card this year? Not me. And even if I did have that on my bingo card, I, I, th I would think that'd be blank the entire year. Roy McIlroy had a chance to win, but he kind of just had an average day on the final round. Here's Traylon Burke's jersey and autograph, which was a little frustrating. Kind of did the, what he did at the Open Championship or the British Open last year. Where he was the, the leader going into, was the leader going into the final round, but just kind of didn't really, just I think shot for par basically. And then Cam, I think Cam Smith, I think it was, caught him. And same thing here. I feel like if he made a... I mean, he didn't make a single putt outside of seven feet. Bailey Zappi to 35. Patriots. So a lot of people rooting for... Including myself. A lot of people rooting for, for Rory. Um, but just kind of bummed people out at the end of the day. Donovan Wilson to 199. Wyndham Clark, great story. You know, he's going to be on, our, on on the, you know, he's going to be on our Ryder Cup team now with that with that win, vault him into a Ryder Cup spot. So we'll see him in Italy later this year. But but kind of wild, yeah. Sh Sh Xander Shoffley was looking good the first two days, but just didn't start his Saturday right and just wasn't even in play on Sunday. Same with Ricky Fowler. That was a bummer of a story too. I think there are a lot of people rooting for Ricky Fowler out there. But he just had a bad Sunday and was never really in the mix. Scotty Scheffler couldn't really hit putts. He's been struggling. I don't think he was average putter this week, but but he was playing other parts of his game were so good that if he had like a few putts land here and there you know, like he would have, he could have chased down the leader and won. Same with Rory. If he hit a putt or two, I think he would have been a couple strokes ahead of, of Wyndham Clark and would have would have won it. There's Sam Howell to 75, piece of, piece of the jersey that goes to Douglas. And there's Christian Harris to 249. That's a tricolor for... Houston, that's going to be for Steve Locke. And we've got Bobby Wagner to 99 and Christian Watson, 16 out of 35. White prism parallel for Green Bay, Simon. David saying, I was pulling for Fowler, but happy for Clark after hearing this story. Yeah, it's a good, it's, I mean, it's not a good story, but it is definitely a story that pulls on the heartstrings. You know, his mom introduced him to golf, got a golfing scholarship to Oklahoma State. His mom passed away of breast cancer, you know, um, while he was in college, which 
he was close to his mom. He really beat him up. Ended up just kind of, kind of losing focus, kind of falling apart a little bit. Ended up transferring to Oregon to rediscover his game. Rediscovered it. Became one of the better college, if not one of the best college amateurs or amateur players in the country. One of the best college players in the country. And obviously, you know, his dad was a big part of his game too. So he was able to win that on Father's Day. I think was was a big story for him. So it's one of those like, yeah, would I have rather had Ricky Fowler or, you know, <laughs> or uh, Rory McIlroy win? Sure. But if someone was going to win it, you know, something like this, you know, might as well be Wyndham Clark. I think a Scotty Scheffler win would have been kind of boring. He's fine, I guess. Cam Smith shot a six final round sixty seven. He he looked like he was gonna he was gonna run down the leader if 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 someone stumbled a little bit. Tom Kim, a Korean kid, uh, chased down a he shot a twenty nine on the front nine. He ended up with a pretty nice day. Good golf though. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Not sure if TV it's kind of represented it really well, but I guess that happens with every golf course. I feel like everyone says whenever the Masters is televised, it's like everyone says, you know, it's a lot more hilly than you think. It's a lot, a lot more hills than you than you see on TV. I guess the same, same with most courses. They gotta have more cameras on the ground. Enough of these tower shots. James Cook. Uh, going to the Bills. Timothy with the Bills. Buffalo! We got Christian Watson, 002 out of 199 for Simon. It's amazing to see these players um, up close, though, hitting. I mean, I started playing golf last summer, last fall, and, you know, I've gotten a lot better hitting the ball than I when I first did, and so nowhere close to these guys, obviously, but it's pretty, uh, pretty ridiculous when you see these players, especially when you see them, like, my side, you know, I'm not a very big dude, when you see, like, like little guys. Is destroying the ball. I'm just like, wait, how do I generate that? And how do I get that hip rotation? Ryan, uh, the list of invitees could be viewed by clicking the no, but that's actually a good idea. Um, it's on the break schedule. That Nightbot drops frequently. The breaks are the, that I always point to. I'll, I can drop that link again in the chat. I think I, I thought I did it before. But click the break schedule. Jalen Hurts to 99. That's Kenny Pickett. Got a Chris Olave, Neon Icons to 10. Yeah, Tommy Fleetwood had a really great round. I like Tommy Fleetwood. I feel like... I feel like... Uh, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, I, I might put, might invest a little bit of money on uh, on Tommy Fleetwood, Rory McIlroy in the Open Championship in Liverpool. I feel like they're kind of heating up at the right time for that kind of event.
Jalen Hurst is 75. And Sauce Gardner autograph? Yes. Rookie auto for the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. That's your defensive rookie of the year. That's going to go to Patrick. 33 out of 199. There's Roger McCreary, 149. All right, final two boxes. Of course itself, I mean, I've not been to a lot of, uh, I've not seen a lot of pro golf in general. You know, I've always watched it for, you know, pretty much my entire life on TV. But not been to a lot of golf courses. So to see the scope and scale of a of a course set up for a major championship was, was pretty crazy. I went to the Genesis this year at the Riviera Country Club here in Los Angeles. Yeah, all that info is accessible there, Ryan. The break, not only a break schedule, which I which I usually have on the screen while we're in between breaks, but yeah, but that that screen that schedule screen that you often see is you can directly link to it as well. Nightbot drops it every is automatically drops that info every other minute or so in the chat. Always pay attention to that, ladies and gentlemen. In addition to that, sometimes I'll put my picks for entertainment purposes only, but I'll put my picks on there. There's a shipping tab that's really helpful. Um, that shipping tab will tell you the status of your particular break. I think we're been a little behind. We've had some people in and out of town during the summer. There were some longer breaks that have kind of clogged up the shipping supply chain here at Chaspies. But we will be catching up. All that shipping always ebbs and flows depending on, you know, the length of breaks that we have. There's out of 75, Brian Robinson. Obviously, when, we, when we're doing a lot of that Bowman Jumbo or that Series 2, it always tends to clog things up a little bit. Brian Robinson will go to Douglas and Malik Willis. Sweet level silver will go to Mark and the Titans. I feel like there's other information on those tabs too that we've goofed around with over the years. Here is Garrett Wilson autograph. No, just rookie swatches. But there's your offensive rookie of the year going to uh, Patrick D and the Jets. Fifty-one out of seventy-five. And obviously that info, Ryan, and for, and you know, and for everybody else, sometimes um, we'll put uh, we'll type in some of the filler information in there. Sometimes we'll put you know other public service announcements on there. And that is, but that is always accessible um, as long as you have a mobile device and an internet connection. You can all you can bookmark that link and look at it even when we're not. Um, on air or even if we are let's say you're at work or I don't know doing something else and you're like hey I wonder I wonder when my breaks coming up you can check the schedule Romeo Dobbs going to Green Bay and that's for Simon Nick Bosa to 49 well, Kenny Pickett Antonio Gibson to 149. 
Got a Minka Fitzpatrick tricolor and a Jalen Tolbert rookie jersey and autograph for the Cowboys. That's going to go to Charles. Eleven out of forty-nine on the Jalen Tolbert. All right, final box coming up. Let's go, final box. Watching the final round of the U.S. Open here. McElroy's putting wasn't bad per se, but I think he ha hadn't had not hit a putt over seven feet after hitting a green in regulation. You know what I mean? Like uh, nails the green on the approach because you you got to hit at least a couple of those. You know, over the course of a of a major championship on a fr Friday and, or on a Saturday and Sunday, you got to luck out with like 15 foot putt or you chip something in, hole, hole it in with a chip, something like that. You got to get a few birdies here and there that way. And he would have been right there. Poor, poor Ricky Fowler just, just didn't have a very, uh, very good Sunday. If the weather made things a little bit softer. I, I, I wonder if he would have benefited from that like he did in the first couple of days. But it's good to see him back, though. I think I think he's now eligible for. Is he eligible for all the majors now? Without anything additional. Pierre Strong Jr. seventy five. Get how all the rules work at the different majors. Well, be good to see. He's a pretty popular player, even without the W's. But maybe he'll rattle some off. Pierre Strong Jr. to seventy-five for the Patriots. That's for Ron. I know it's a football break, but it's not a lot of NFL news happening here. I guess Antonio Brown's team booted from the Arena League. I guess that, I mean, that's the kind of headlines that are happening here. Jake, a football player, J.K. Dobbins, is, is, uh, is frustrated with this contract negotiation. I feel like you can just insert any name in, into Dobbins' name. Yeah, the Albany Empire, owned by Antonio Brown, kicked out of the Arena League. That's, that's the ESPN headline there. It failed to pay either required fee or a fine he received after recent public comment. So. A lot of NFL players at Los Angeles Country Club watching the U.S. Open. I think Matthew Stafford got a few minutes on, got a couple minutes on TV on Thursday or Friday. I think Josh Allen was there swinging the sticks along with maybe Von Miller, perhaps. Some guys there. Here comes McBride. Jumbo relic. Trey McBride was not there, at least not, not. It wasn't publicly acknowledged he was there. He might have been there. I just said no. Michael P. with the Cardinals. It's 42 out of 90. No disrespect to Trey McBride, but, you know, when Josh Allen and Matthew Stafford are showing up, they get a little more love. Desmond Ritter going to Mark and the ATL. Got Kobe Bryant to one ninety nine. I think next year's U.S. Open in North Carolina. I want to say. I think it's in Pinehurst. Is that in North Carolina? I think so. <laughs> Someone will correct me if it's not. This one's for the Seahawks. That's for Douglas. 
I don't think it comes back to the, I don't think a major comes back to the West Coast until for a number of years. Maybe a few years. Not until another U.S. Open. I think at Pebble Beach. Maybe. I think the women's U.S. Open is at Pebble Beach this year. Ezekiel Elliott to 199 and an Emmanuel Sanders jersey and autograph for the Steelers. That's going to be for Patrick Evans' last spot mojo. Pinehurst is in North Carolina. Have a golf trip planned there in September. Nice. You know, and after my experience with the uh, with the LA Country Club, and I'm wondering if maybe should open U.S. Open Championships always be at a course where regular guys like us can play? Maybe. Is Wandale Robinson not at Fancy Country Clubs? Even if the green fees are... I guess we can technically play Pebble Beach, right? But I think it's like a zillion dollars around, but still. Anyway, I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for the golf chat. Select football. Pick your team. 11 is in the books. A lot of NFLers like to golf. I hear Pinehurst is nice, right? Got some out of fives, got some train whistles. Pretty solid. I wouldn't see any crazy, I wouldn't see like Kenny Pickett, you know, NFL Shields or anything like that, but maybe that's in the second half. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.